I made this much money in this amount of time with this many subscribers as a faceless Minecraft YouTuber. I want to walk you through how I did it and where I went wrong. Also, be sure to scroll down below and subscribe because if you haven't, I need the money. I mean, I like when people enjoy my content. I was a faceless YouTuber for four or five months at the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. The channel I made in question was, oh no, he's here. And yes, I, I was a Minecraft YouTuber. Part of the reason I stayed faceless for so long was because I didn't necessarily want employers to know or people in my life to know that I, I was kind of making Minecraft kids content. <laughs> So I came up with kind of a five-step program. The first thing that I saw as necessary when creating a new channel was to make sure the algorithm knew that I was what it wanted. I wasn't going to be a gameplay YouTuber because I play with a trackpad. Not only did I start following a lot of comedy creators who I knew were doing what I wanted to do well, but also from just listening to a lot of interviews from famous content creators on YouTube who have been around since 2005 or six. Statistically, it's hard to just make whatever you want if that fluctuates from week to week, if the audience you've accumulated recognizes you for a specific style of content. People don't look at our channel as like, oh, these are creators. They're like, no, we look at this channel as a place to get one thing. The main thing I would say is go in knowing your niche. So after step one was doing my research and getting to understand my niche, step two was to follow through on appealing to that niche. I didn't want to start off making a lot of content that I was going to put a lot of myself in, that was going to be very humor-based, that because I know the algorithm isn't locked onto my channel in a specific way, won't go out to a lot of people. So I started off my channel doing what people in the business like to call uh, stealing. At the time, there were a lot of fan songs about the Dream SMP being made. For people who don't know, the Dream SMP is a Minecraft server that Dream and a lot of other famous Minecraft YouTubers are a part of. They were creating a storyline. It was a whole thing. I didn't follow it too much until it was too late for me. But I took a lot of the fan songs that people had made of this famous entity, crammed them all together into a 30 minute video. I didn't monetize it and I put out three volumes of that. And the goal of those videos was to research SEO and tags and everything I could do to get those videos out even though I didn't have the benefit of custom thumbnails or video monetization yet and try and make three videos that specifically pandered toward watch time and viewer recognition. The additional idea of those videos were that each one of the three would feed off of each other and create this perfect storm of algorithmic success. Granted, in Stealing From Children, I put all the links in the description for all the songs and all the original content creators, but I knew I couldn't, one, monetize my channel with borrowed content on it, and two, use borrowed content forever. Once I had gotten about 3,000 subscribers from just uploading these videos that got 500 to 600,000 views, I moved on to step three, which was to upload original content that pandered to the same niche I had been catering the algorithm toward. Something that I thought was kind of unique to me that I could bring my own spin toward with this specific niche of content was doing impressions and doing voice acting. So, as cringy as it is, I started doing impressions of other Minecraft YouTubers. And at first, it didn't really take off. A parody song that I made had a few animatics made of it that I think Quackity and Jay Schlett and a few other content creators saw. But after a few weeks of creating these minute-long skits and appearing in a few other YouTubers' videos for gameplay, I kind of stagnated around 11,000 subscribers, which at the time, don't get me wrong, was incredible. But there was a constant urge to feel like I was feeding the algorithm the same way I had been. The fourth step of my plan, which I hadn't quite gotten to and never really did, was to branch out into more personality-based content. And I was starting to wonder whether if I did make the transition, if it would betray what the algorithm had thought I was capable of. One thing I wish I had implemented earlier, which I know works, is telling people to subscribe at the beginning. I know it's an overused trope, but when I started implementing it near the end of my channel, the amount of people who subscribed to me on a daily basis doubled. My watch time didn't go up, my click-through rate didn't go up, the only thing that changed was me telling people to subscribe, and it works. Also, subscribe to this channel. So far, I had been looking at the styles and formats of thumbnails that had high click-through rates and trends in structuring my titles, but at the same time, it wasn't necessarily enough to propel me to the next stage, which is when a little bit of luck came in. I had made a 30-second video that I think got 100,000 views, and it was a meme impersonating Technoblade. This was long before he passed, this was, I think, the end of 2020 and I started getting DMs on Twitter which had never really happened before and I started immediately wondering what I had done wrong. Apparently at the end of one of his streams he had reacted to the video in full and told people to go subscribe to me. Let's get him some clout. Let's get him some clout guys all right. Get him some clout. <laughs> he does the voice so well. Because that little act of kindness that changed the trajectory of my channel 
forever. If I'm remembering correctly, I got 6,000 subscribers in less than an hour. This channel right now, over the course of eight years, only got like 4,000. So this was crazy for me. This had never happened before. And I honestly, I tried to jump on it as fast as I could. I had my share of successes with Ono, oh he's here. In the span of December alone, I made like $3,000 just off of ad revenue for two minute long videos. My most viewed videos on the channel got, I think around 600,000, 700,000 views. And by around February, I had kind of mastered the algorithm and was getting one out of 10 or two out of 10 videos, but even though I was doing really well with Minecraft meme content, the goal eventually had been to create original content. It still would probably have been Minecraft YouTube, but every time I tried to branch out of my niche, it just didn't work. And there are people who have done that successfully. Maybe I was jumping the gun and I was too eager to start putting my best foot forward as far as doing everything that I knew I could do if I just showed my face or created skits that involved me and my friends. And maybe in part I have my old man brain to blame in part for not understanding how to cater to the YouTube algorithm. I'm not the most technologically savvy person Person. My microphone stand is a box of Crayola chalk, but in reality, somewhere along the line, my calculations were off. Step five was to just be happy creating content. I didn't accomplish everything I wanted to do with Oh No, He's Here. And I do have regrets about how I just kind of fell off the face of the earth. But honestly, some good things did come out of me being a faceless YouTuber. My friend Emma made me merch. One time she went into grad school and she had a water bottle with my logo on it. And for some reason, a 25 year old in grad school to become a librarian recognized the logo of a Minecraft YouTuber who had been dead for five months. I made a lot of friends that I wouldn't have otherwise and actually got into playing some of the Minecraft stuff. While some men were playing sports and baseball, I was playing a wizard on a Minecraft SMP. I bought a custom face mask based off my logo that I literally used only once when I tried to poison my friends with mac and cheese based alcohol. And as much as I've tried to chalk up leaving my channel to wanting to pursue better mental health and all that, Truth be told, the biggest reason I probably left the channel was because the pandemic ended. And maybe I would have stuck with it more if I had put more of myself into what I was making. I guess the advice I would give to anyone who found themselves in my situation would be make the content fit you don't make you fit the content. After months of not uploading and realizing that the channel was dying, I decided to just do what I want on YouTube. I took the face mask off and I just filmed shorts in my backyard and I decided that for the last 10 days of 2021, I was gonna make one skit a day. And honestly, everyone who was still stuck around on my channel really responded well to it. Can we look at the fan art for a second? Oh, you did this. You people did. This is crazy to me. Look at it go, it's still going. The 4,000 to 6,000 people who tuned in for those last 10 videos really liked what I was making. And granted, the YouTube algorithm didn't pick it up at all. But even though I only made like $80 off of those videos, and I think the most viewed one only has like 6,500 views, it's still far and away the most fun I've ever had uploading on YouTube. If you haven't seen them, the videos are linked in the description. And truth be told, when I was making content that had me in it, and I was putting that into the world, I was really happy with not having to worry about putting my name in it or my face in it. I'm sure not everyone who uploads on YouTube has this kind of internal crisis or maybe they just choose to not talk about it. But at the end of the day, I am glad that I'm a YouTuber with a face again. It wasn't a bad experiment. I still have never gotten 50,000 subscribers on another channel and I might not ever again. But that's okay because the experience, even if I didn't pursue it in the end, helped me understand more of what I want out of making stuff. I'm writing scripts now. I'm making this video so that my channel doesn't get demonetized because I've hit the minimum number of watch hours for the last year. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. Getting the minimum number of watch time hour. <laughs>